Okay, hey guys, it's Lee here from Presonus, and I'm here at Red Bull Studios in London, and we're here for a Studio One get together, but also a sneak peek at some Studio One 4.6 features that we have coming. So, uh, software is being released on 10th of December, we hope, uh, and this is just a quick sneak peek of some of the features that we have coming. Um, okay, so in Studio One, we give lots of uh, free updates and bug fixes, and we work on work, uh, workflow in between major releases, and we give these for free. So we've had um, two major updates in 4.5 and now 4.6, uh, giving a lot of free uh, features. But we've also had lots of other smaller updates, uh, fixing bugs, because there's always going to be some kind of bugs that we're always working on, uh, workflow uh, improvements as well. So uh, the first thing we've looked at is in the browser. Um, so we've tried to make this a bit more user friendly and a bit easier to, to navigate and search through. Uh, what we've done is we've introduced gallery mode. So in gallery mode, we get to uh, change the view for our plugins into these kind of folders and icons, and this will work for third-party uh, plugins as well. Um, we've also, and that, that that will work for your instruments and your effects. Um, we've also introduced this panel here. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a breadcrumbs approach, I, I guess. It means you can work backwards out of uh, your folders as you work into them. So if I want to jump back straight to my effects folder, I just hit this tab, brings me straight back. And then I have the option to work in the old list view as well. So um, just that's a few little upgrades we've done in the gallery, uh, or, or sorry, in the browser section with gallery mode. Um, also, we've introduced uh, convert instrument part to pattern part. So we were able to, before, make a pattern, change that to an instrument part. But now we can do it the opposite way around. So again, small improvements. Uh, listening to a lot of feature requests from users. So these are some things that have popped up and we've tried to deliver. Um, real time, uh, time stretching support for Presence XT is another uh, improvement to our sampler. Um, another big area we've looked at is PreSonus Exchange. So you may notice in the um, browser window, you've got a, a cloud tab. And in here, you've got PreSonus Exchange. So we always had PreSonus Exchange in the last few versions. Um, but what we've done is try to improve uh, the usability and kind of the friendliness of, of using this because this is meant to be uh, a community that are exchanging ideas with presets and things like this. So you can upload your presets that you've worked on and then you can download other user presets. Uh, what's cool is we've introduced a landing page now. So it's more of a kind of social look to this area. Um, and you can you can actually give feedback on other people's presets and they can do the same on, on yours as well. So trying to make this somewhere that you'll spend more time and interact with other users and learn how they're using Studio One. Um, improve tempo matching for loops. So uh, in Studio One, uh, the tempo is embedded in your audio. So sometimes you might bring in some audio that you don't have the tempo information. Uh, we've introduced this feature that will look for a .bpm to try and extract the tempo in a more automatic fashion so it'll be quicker. If you want to change the tempo of your session afterwards, your audio should be able to link up automatically then and change in most cases. Um, improved copy and paste for the arranger section. So now we've got your standard command C and uh, command Z type commands that will work in the arranger section for moving the different sections of your arrangement around really fast. So again, just a simple upgrade that's been requested by a lot of users to get your workflow and speed working. Okay, so we've introduced a new podcast template as well, and this is being designed uh, by one of the guys who runs a Facebook page with a couple of thousand users that are using Studio One for voiceovers um, and that, that sort of style of production. So this template has a macros page as well, so it really caters for the podcast guys to get up and running really fast. And you'll see that in when you create a new song. Okay, so another major feature that we've improved is with our state space modeled amps and pedals. So we now have a separate pedal board, which you can actually just drag onto any channel and use it as a separate plugin. And we've got a nice selection of pedals. Now, some of these came with the older version of Studio One, but then wherever you see this state space modeled 
icon. Uh, we've got a um, big fuzz, a fat distortion pedal as well, and a really nice tube screamer model, uh, model stage space model. So we've also introduced Ampire. So this is Ampire 3. And with Ampire 3, you now get state space modeled uh, copies of really, really well known amps that you'd be very familiar with, but they're all really hand selected vintage amps. So even nice um, bass amps, cabinets that are impulse response modeled as well. Uh, you also get different mic settings as well. So you've got your, you know, your standard dynamic mics and your ribbon mics and your XY pairs. And then you've also got a built-in tuner, which is really important. Um, the important thing with um, this version of Ampire is state space modeled, because uh, we've gone and modeled these amps at a circuit level, a component level. So our engineers in Germany will select each different um, uh, element of a circuit and measure its values. And so a lot of these circuits will have, you know, non-linear characteristics that we can now reproduce because we measure each component and then we build this amplifier again in the digital domain. So we're building this amplifier from digital components basically and they will start to react in the same way as the real amp did. So if you start to drive the gain um, and push different effects and interact different pedals with different amps, different uh, speaker cabinets, you'll start to get the feel of a real amp and a real setup. Um, and as you guys try this out, you'll see that th these sounds are really, really nice and warm and really feel like the amps that they were modeled directly from. So it's not just um, like a static modeling of the character of an amp. This is like a dynamic modeling where it will change as you interact with it, just as a real analog amplifier would. Um, so that's pretty much uh, the main overview features for 4.6. I think you guys are really going to enjoy the amps on the, uh, the pedal board. Um, but there are also some workflow things that have really improved and we're constantly going to be working on this and listening to you guys' input for feature requests as well on prisonus.answers.com. Uh, so uh, keep the features coming in and we'll keep listening and trying to improve Studio One to work better for you guys.